Welcome to today's lecture on the rise of extremism and the collapse of Weimar democracy. We're going to be focusing mainly on the uh, collapse of Weimar democracy from about 1929 through to 1933. We're just going to quickly look at the rise of extremism, both left-wing and, and in its right-wing variants. The key element on the left is the creation of the KPD, the German Communist Party, which splits the left between the revolutionary wing and the democratic road to uh, socialism, um, which was endorsed by the SPD. There's a bitterness on the left, uh, between in, in which, which goes through this split, by the fact the SPD are involved in the suppression of the Spartacist uprising in very 1919 and the murder of Liebknecht in Luxembourg. The KPD support comes mainly from the working class, the unemployed, and um, the, uh, another major event uh, for, in terms of the uh, KPD, especially in terms of support, was, was the collapse of the USPD, which is another splinter movement which breaks away from the SPD in 1917, um, which means that the communists uh, gain around about 400,000 new members. However, having said that, the electoral appeal of the uh, KPD was relatively small in, uh, as you can see there, gaining just 2.1% for votes in 1920. The right-wing variant of uh, extremism, um, again, um, is, is important, although, again, relatively small and on the fringes, especially throughout the 1920s. In 1919, uh, Drexler forms the uh, German Workers' Party, which is then uh, renamed the uh, National Socialist German Workers' Party, or NSGAP, or Nazi Party for short, uh, under the tutelage of Hitler, who, uh, who outs Drexler from uh, party chairman. The, uh, there's an attempt at revolution by uh, this group um, in 1923, but uh, that fails, and uh, the parliamentary road to power is adopted by the Nazis in 1925. As I say, relatively small uh, uh, fringe party, only gaining 2.6% of the vote in the Reichstag state elections, even as late as 1928. There are a number of paramilitary organisations, um, not just the FICOR, which we uh, have been focused on on previous lectures. You get, for example, the Reichsbanner Schwarz Rock Gold, or the uh, Red, uh, Black, Red and Gold uh, Party, or uh, paramilitary organization which was founded in 1924 and was officially linked to the SPD and the trade unions. It had around about 3 million members by 1932. There's the Rote Front Kampfverbund or the Red Fighter League formed in 1924 as the paramil paramilitary wing of the KPD. Its aim was to defend the working classes from attack by the radical right and it had around about 111,000 members by about 1927. The Storm Abdrung, or the Storm Division of the SA, founded in 21, the paramilitary wing of the Nazi Party, acted as a uniformed guard to protect speakers of the party meetings and intimidate opposition. That was one of their key things. Later on, around about 55 members in 23, rising to about half a million about a decade later. And finally, the Stahlhelmbunder Front Soldaten, or the Steel Helmet, the League of Frontline Soldiers, uh, founded in 1918 by Franz Stelter, uh, which was anti-democratic, nationalistic, although non-partisan, but had close links to the racist DMVP party. So, 1929, uh, the Wall Street crash, how does this affect Germany? Well, the very fact that America had been uh, lending money at quite high uh, amounts um, throughout the 1920s, especially after 1924, basically to prop it up, um, meant that a lot of those loans were called in, and as a result of that, a lot of German businesses collapsed. Um, this led to banks collapsing, leading to eventually massive employment. Two million German workers out of work by the winter of 1930, uh, 1930 uh, uh, rising to 6.1 million uh, in early 1933. Uh, this led, obviously, to material hardship, but also to an important psychological effect, fear, uncertainty, a loss of pride and status, and feeling that the fabric of society was just unravelling. How could you trust the government anymore if they couldn't control um, the economy? It also meant that the government were also hamstrung as it quickly, quite quickly became a political crisis as the social insurance, uh, the, um, the uh, uh, amount of money that was given to unemployed workers uh, was just being overloaded simply because there were so many unemployed. Well, 
in terms of politics, what was happening? Well, in March 1930, Herman Muller's Grand Coalition collapsed when the DUVP and SPD members of the cabinet could not agree on how to solve the crisis, basically because SPD refused any cuts to be made. This led for Bruning, uh, leader of the Centre Party, to be appointed by Hindenburg, who was then the president, and uh, very famously was a general in the First World War. Bruning had a lack of charisma or had, and tried to put through unpopular deflationary policies which were meant to cut the public spending and tax rises, and it, but he was unable to command the majority in the White Bear. Thus, in the summer of 1931 onwards, he was forced to use the emergency powers to pass any legislation, and that was crucial, basically bypassing the democratic process. The, the depression basically uh, radicalises German politi politics. As I said to you before, it was quite clear that the uh, normal democratic parties that supported Weimar were unable to um, to uphold or uh, create any sort of stability, both politically and economically. That meant that the what once what were once fringe parties were now becoming more and more players. Um, this meant the KP parties like the KPD and the NSDAP, the Nazis, were becoming more and more popular. Um, as you can see there, Nazis were the second largest party in the White Bank by 1930, and uh, this led to the Hartsberg Front, uh, which was an anti-Republican, anti-Weimar alliance with the Nazis, Hugin and Hindenburg, GMDP, and the Gestaltheim. Um, by 1933, Hitler is confident enough to challenge Hindenburg for the presidency, although that didn't quite come off. By 1932, Brüning had lost the support of the president and his advisers, and the policies had not been significant to solve the problems caused by the depression or stop the escalation of violence in the streets. So in June 1932, Franz von Papen, also of the Centre Party, heads the right-wing cabinet of the Barons. Well, the final crisis also comes uh, through in 1932, which uh, again was meant that the democratic process has been bypassed, where uh, a legal constitutional coup is made in Prussia itself, uh, part of the key part of during the already elected SPD government in Prussia, is deposed by the army on the orders of Van Papen. A Reich commissioner was then installed, and Social Democrats and Liberal officials replaced by conservative civil servants. Papen was then replaced himself by Kurt von Schleicher. So you can see the army becoming more and more involved in the running of the government. Papen, in, order to, in a way, is trying to get his uh, power back, in, uh, entering secret negotiations with the Nazis, big business from li large landowners, and um, win a majority in the Reichstag. Uh, in 1933, Hindenburg reluctantly agreed to dismiss Schleicher and replace him with Hitler. The main idea here is the Conservatives thought they could control the Nazis. Hitler uh, was, although he was a uh, chancellor, he was very much in a minority in the cabinet. Well, why did uh, Weimar democracy eventually fail? Well, there were quite clearly domestic factors. It lacked popular support, especially in the last years between 1929 and 1933. There were constitutional flaws, especially in terms of um, the rule by president and the proportional representation, and also the role of the established elite, the fact that they refused really to join in and support uh, Weimar, especially uh, the landed elites and the army itself. There were also in fa in, uh, international factors, if you want to look at the legacy of Versailles, the world economic crisis that broke out after 1929, and the general crisis of liberal democracy, which we're going to briefly mention a bit later. So, uh, people accepted the republic, but they had never, they were never saw it as uh, something that was wholly they could identify with, uh, mainly because of uh, there was very little tradition of participatory politics in Germany. The uh, democratic institutions were relatively new. They had never n negative experiences of democracy associated with a crisis that was going to be between 1919 and uh, 1923. Uh, although 1924 and 29 were seen as the golden years, this was only the case if you lived in urban areas. And not all people um, benefited from the upturn. The Nazis had much better uh, party at uh, better time, well, they were much better party at targeting their message to these disaffected groups. Quite clearly, uh, proportional representation in the, in the way it was instituted 
did not have support. It was the fact that one seat in the Reichstag represented around about 60,000 voters that led to a proliferation of parties and therefore um, meant that you had uh, governments which were uh, coalitions, often very weak, and the fact that you had Article 48, which allowed the president to assume emergency powers and pass bills into law without the approval of the Reichstag. And so you had one which is an element which is seen as very weak, i.e. the support of representation, another part which was seen as completely anti-democratic, and the other could really square the circle. It was open to misuse by Article 48 uh, when the president was not supportive of the republican system, especially when Hitler becomes president. The key elites refused to help, um, the civil service, big business, the army, uh, landowners, and they were, as I say, very much ambivalent. The emerging conservative clique of advisers around the president had been considered an authoritarian configuration of the republic since 1939, and the middle and upper classes saw the communists as a bigger threat than the Nazis. Versailles itself, uh, hamstrung the Weimar Republic, many people saw them, uh, the Weimar politicians who had agreed to Versailles as um, people who, although uh, could possibly run the country, uh, very much uh, had to, uh, felt that they had given in to the uh, Allies, Britain, especially Britain and France. And they were seen as uh, they stabbed a lot of the army in the back. And this was a powerful theme in the propaganda on the right. There was ongoing frustration of the failure, failure to revive the peace treatment, and German, uh, Germany continued to feel like a second-class power. In fact, they could be like the larger German League of Nations until much later. All of this undermined support for the Republican system and the moderate parties. The Great Depression, as it, depression radicalizes German society, as I said to you before. People who were more uh, sort of reluctantly supported the Republican parties in the centre and the um, just the democratic left and right was spreading much more further towards the uh, the fringes, the KPD and the NSDAP. Moderate parties and democratic systems have been unable to solve the problems of the unemployment and social insurance. The, mainly the unemployed were turning on those large numbers of them turned to the KPD, while the middle classes, were, which were fearful of this, turned to the Nazis. In other words, to, to ensure that the KPD was dealt with. And in, to some extent, a lot of the middle classes were quite happy that the, uh, the Nazis were using violence in the streets against the KPD as they saw them as the greatest threat. Uh, here we can see um, a, 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 a map and a chart to show how the, uh, the Nazis gained power, and not just the Nazis, but the KPD as well, gained power uh, and votes throughout this 1928-42 uh, period. And of course, there was a, a European context, context to this. There were te only 26 democratic states uh, in Europe by 1920, by 1940. This had been reduced to 10. Reason for the economic collapse, there was a threat from the left. There was a fear of the spread of the bacillus of Bolshevism from Soviet Russia as more and more power, uh, the, 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 so uh, the Soviet Union became um, more and more stable. And also, they could see what was going on in terms of Stalin's rise, which was uh, much more threatening. The use of the, com um, the common term, in other words, the spread uh, revolution, the rise of the communist parties and the splitting of the left in the European um, uh, countries throughout the 1920s. There was an agreed nationalism uh, with the breaking up of the old empires, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Turkish Empire, the German Empire. New countries were being created, although new in some ways, uh, they obviously had uh, nationalistic grievances against each other. Uh, there was an economic crisis, and there was weak democratic institutions and traditions. Uh, as is a quote there from Franklin uh, Roosevelt, the American president, history proves that dictatorships do not grow out of strong and successful governments, but out of weak and helpless governments.